is not that many in progress. But we hope in the future we will recruit more international students. And now we have uh, five faculty of schools. They are faculty of business and management, faculty of science and technology, and faculty of humanities and social sciences, and school of culture and creativity, and school of general education. So School of General Education is newly founded. It's uh, founded uh, in this summer, so it's very new. And um, this, this school includes uh, General Education Combination Center, Whole Person Education Center, and also English Language Center and Chinese Language and Cultural Center. So Chinese courses is provided by Chinese Language Center to uh, all international students. Uh, so he, here are the majors offered by different faculties and schools. So here you can see our accounting and finance and also e-business management and information systems are the most popular programs for faculty of business and management. And this one shows the major of faculty of science and technology. And uh, in 2022, the most popular pro program is uh, computer science and technology, and also artificial intelligence are the most popular uh, programs among international students. And this is the major provided by faculty of humanities and social sciences. And the Chinese culture and the global communication is the new major and uh, in 2022, uh, it is very popular to international students. Here are the majors provided by School of Culture and Creativity. Uh, School of Culture and Creativity, I think um, this school has most of the international students. They are very interested in MAD, media arts and design, and also cinema and television, and uh, culture, creativity, and management. These are very popular programs. And here, um, this page, page showed the curriculum structure. Uh, the courses, um, international students need to study 147 to 154 credits to uh, graduate. Uh, that means they need to study uh, 63 to 82 major courses and the 36 uh, university call um, they need to get 36 credits for university core programs. And also they need to study uh, 18 credits for general education courses and uh, 15 to 30 uh, credits for free electives. And we have a very diversified performance evaluation criteria. You can see students need to take the assignment and also quiz, group projects, and midterm and final term for, uh, for the final grades. Uh, USC started to offer scholarships in 2020. So for 2023 intake, uh, they will also, USC will also provide, USC will also provide uh, for the scholarship. But uh, the scholarship is very limited, like for full scholarship um, and 30% scholarship, it is very limited. So it's really first come, first served. Uh, probably I uh, click play of the, let me restart my PPT. I'm sorry for this. Yeah, or, or you could exit again and go directly to the scholarship page. Okay. Oh, there it is there. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, back one more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened. So, oh, I can just um go through the pages like it. this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's fine. That's also fine. Yeah. 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 Just as I mentioned, U.S. provided limited full scholarships and also thirty percent entry scholarships and the government scholarships, and these scholarships are first come first served. So uh, we really uh, recommend students to apply to USC as early as possible. Um, these are the uh, criteria we recruited international students. So I will go through this very quickly. 
And also we have 80 countries requirements for international students, like we have a very detailed uh, requirements for students from Malaysia, from Vietnam, also from India. So I can show this on our website later. And here are the documents students need to apply, uh, need to be provided, um, like graduate certification or high school transcripts, recommend recommendation letters, personal statements, passport copy, and language certification. If the students from non-English speaking countries, they need to provide TOEFL score, um, which is 79 to net based or else for six. And our application deadline is uh, June the 30th every year. And now uh, I want to mention something about the visa. Um, uh, on August 22nd, uh, international students can apply for long-term study visa to come back to China to study. Uh, for our international students, they can apply for X1 visa to come back by using the GW22 form provided by our office and also by using the official letter, uh, which mentioned that they can come back to the school to study and also the passport, they can uh, apply for the long-term study visa to come back to study in China. So we really hope that in 2023, we can have more international students uh, to study in China. <laughs> and that's some of the education philosophy of USC. So I just go this uh, very quickly. Um, here are the photos of the activities we have organized for our international students. Um, in 2021, we have 1,523 graduates and uh, more than 1,096 graduates went to the um, QS ranked 100 schools. So we really have very good graduates. That's some of the figure. Um, International Development Office now have partnered institutions uh, from uh, around. We have um, partnered institutions from all around the world, and we have more than 60 uh, universities, I mean, partner institutions. And our international students and US students, they can study in one of the, our partner institutions for one semester. Um, that's the activities and events we have organized for our international students in the past years. So that's some of the pictures of Zhuhai City. So um, each month we will help, we will have uh, one or two international students activities um, like calligraphy, traditional food making, flower arranging, tai chi, and etc. And here are some pictures of the campus scenery. It, this is our phase one campus. Uh, this is our learning resource center, which is our library. Here are some photos of our dormitories. This is our sports complex. This is our sports park. Here are some photos of student cafeteria. Yeah, that's all for my presentation. So I welcome questions from our agencies. Thanks, Jessica. Perhaps first you could go um, and show us uh, the website yes. and some of the specific uh, entry requirements uh, for some of our Southeast Asia uh, countries. Okay, give me one second. So here you can see our. Um, I think you just need to uh, share share your browser. Okay. Yeah. So Cambodia, we the international students need to finish diploma of Harper 
secondary education. Uh, sorry, sorry, both. Jessica, we still cannot see your screen uh, just yet. You might have to uh, share the screen again. Uh, okay. How about this time? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, yeah. great. So, yeah, great. so here you can. You can see our automation requirements from Cambodia. So the students okay. need to have a diploma of upper secondary education and also provide recognized English language qualifications like TOEFL yep. or IELTS score. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, and so yeah, let's go down to what do we have here? Vietnam. Yeah, let's see Vietnam. Vietnam. Here, upper yeah. secondary school graduation certification and also recognize English language qualifications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, for the batch for all bachelor programs, what is the IELTS requirement again for everyone? Uh, six, 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 zero, six, four. Six point zero, yeah. Yeah. For all so bachelor for top, yeah. For top with 79, internet based. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Here we yeah. can see the English language requirements. Here, score 79. And also else overall band 6.0. Yeah, that's the English requirement. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the SAT, AP, yeah. All and then you have here. IB, IB, yeah, grade four in IB, yeah. Yes, we have, let me, here. Here, before mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, English A, higher or standard level. And IGCSE is up there too, because some students from Malaysia also have their IGCSE. I think it's just above. IGCSE. Uh, a little bit up, I think, not down. Uh, oh, yeah, IGCSE. IGCSE, number seven. Yeah. yes. So grade four in first language uh, English and also grade mm -hmm. five English as a second language. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could we also look at uh, Malaysia and Indonesia as well? Sure, Malaysia. Here, one of the following, we see all above in at least the six subjects at UEC senior middle level of grade C or above in all at least three subjects in searching, changing. Uh, STPM. Yeah, yes. Okay. And also recognize English language qualifications. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia, let me find information. And India, I think we have agencies from India, right? Yes, so also that's requirement. some from India. That's a requirement for students from India. 70, 75%. And uh, for 2022 intake, we have one student from India and she's a mm -hmm. full scholarship holder. Yeah. And also Indonesia is here. The so when it just say the curriculum, it just means that the student has to pass or graduate from high school, right? And there's no specific uh, score, entry score. They just have yeah. to um, pass. Yes, for tuition paying students is the minimum uh, requirements. And if they want to yeah. get scholars, they really want need to have a high academic performance. Yeah, higher. Yeah. Um, we just got a question. Uh, can you show the Nepal uh, as well? Okay. Nepal. Okay, here. Yeah. Oh, Completion of school leaving certification examination. Great six and seven awarded by the national examinations board mm, mm -hmm, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then can you click on the uh, international curricula sure well? sure so, we so here american we have the test. sat right american yeah because some of our students might do this as well yeah. and then could you Click on the IB. Yes, IB yeah. diploma. Okay. ID, yes. Pro, ID Pro diploma. Okay. Yeah. How about British uh, patent education? So for, yeah. for British um, 
pattern education, we have more um, standard, I mean, more uh, of the uh, mm -hmm. format. Yeah, so everyone can see um, on the website, which, Je um, which Jesse um, has just shared, um, the students can find all of the admission requirements there for every country. You can see it's very, very clear. You've got the regional or national curriculum. You've got the English language requirements there. You also have the international curricula as well. So you can clearly see if the student did um, Australian curriculum overseas or American, British, Canadian, IB, um, even um, the West African certificate um, of secondary education is there as well. So that's that's good to see um, as, as well. So very clear in terms of the, the entry requirements. Mm -hmm. Could you just um, go back to your, um, if there's nothing more to, to show on the website, um, could you perhaps go back to the list of courses as well and maybe just highlight um, two or three courses um, that are most popular with international students and what sort of, um, what, what does their day-to-day -day schedule look like um, on one of those courses? Okay, let me find out about academic registry. So here you can find our calendar, academic calendar, and also undergraduate handbook. Mm -hmm. Here you can yeah. see undergraduate handbook for 2022 to 2023. Then you can see our programs here. Mm. All the programs are listed here. And let's go yeah. uh, accounting program. Accounting is one of the popular programs. Let's go to see the detail information. So it's very small. I don't know whether you can see it clearly or not. Um, so yeah, perhaps you, you could. Here. Yeah, perhaps you could zoom in, maybe a little. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Perfect. So you can see. Uh, so from this page, you can see the four years that plan, like um, how many courses, core courses they need to get during four year study, and how many uh, major required courses, and you know, university core courses. Everything is listed here for each of the yeah. program. And also if the students are interested in um, um, this program, and then we can arrange interview with the program director, and we can invite our faculty to have a direct interview with international students. And also we uh, offer one-to-one -one consultation to international students. So if they really want to talk to us, we can uh, provide this kind of service. Mm, very good. And I can, and I think um, everyone should take note as well. Um, there's a lot of classes um, based on China as well, like Chinese culture class, contemporary Chinese society, um, contemporary world and China. These are all really interesting courses as well that the students should absolutely consider taking as well when they're in, in China. Um, of course, studying in China, it's also really good to know about the basics of Chinese culture, language, society, business side as well, um, because a lot of these students that make the effort to go to China, and this is a four year program as well, so it's a significant amount of time. It's really important from the outset uh, that students really make the effort um, to get to know um, China from, from day one. And that's gonna help really later down the track, whether you stay in China or whether you go back home and then continue doing business or, or trade. Um, with with China as well, it's very very um, important, and I think a value add for uh, for students at doing this course. Okay, thank you both for this excellent um, explanation. Uh, actually, for international students, they can not only apply for the uh, I mean one bachelor degree, they can also apply for a minor um, degree like in mm. Chinese culture and um, global study. So that's a minor um, program. So they can yeah. step forward. Yeah. So um, with this schedule here, most students will study, uh, let's say Monday to Friday, or they can put all of their classes into 
one or two days, or it must be every day they have some class Monday to Friday? Uh, normally, it's from Monday to Friday. They will have classes uh, among the five work days. We want to we want us oh, yeah. to study, yeah, yeah, every yeah. day. Mm. And it can be very early, early in the morning. The class yeah. is it set time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the That's earliest good. class should be eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, and US is only provide I mean, uh, offline study. So. We really hope our students, mm. our international students, can come to China in person to study. So yep. we do moment we cannot provide online study. So that's yep. the point we want to mention. All in person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty clear for accounting. Mm -hmm. So accounting being one of the most popular courses. Um, how? What? What are some other courses that are really popular with? Uh, international students. Okay, we have one student who has studied e-business management and information systems program, and uh, also marketing. One Korean student uh, who is study marketing management program. So that's for MBM and for SCC. Um, we have one American student who has studied animation interactive media program, and we have uh, we will have four because. Uh, we have three. Uh, I don't know whether you know the uh, mass uh, recruitment um, of a university because into, uh, uh, Chinese students, they need to, to have Gaokao to, to go to the university. So they will not choose a major at the beginning, at the first year, they will go to um, a broad study for the first year. And then after the first year, they will go to different programs. It's the same for international students. So now our year one international students, they are studying um, the general uh, courses, year one courses. And later they will select the uh, respective uh, majors. So we will have four international students who will study cinema and television program. Mm -hmm. So it's very popular program. And the cultural mm -hmm. creativity and management program, it is also very popular. And also media arts and design, we have two international students who are studying it right now. And for humanities and social sciences, uh, transculture and global communication program, I think this will be popular among our international students' applications. And uh, PRA, before we have uh, international students who have studied this major. Uh, and also we have one student from Philippines who has studied English language and literature studies now. And also we have students who have studied globalization and development program at the moment. And for FST, we have uh, students who are studying applied psychology at the moment. And also before we have students who are interested in um, computer science and technology, computer science and technology program. Yes, um, most students are from South Korea. So that's um, mm. basic information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So here yeah, you can see the cost description. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you can see the cost description of each of the classes. So here it has all the mm -hmm. um, cost description. All of the units mm -hmm. there. That's fantastic. Yes. yes. The students can have a preview of the courses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. general education courses here are some information mm -hmm. the structure and just to repeat again all uh, all of the courses are delivered uh, in in English um, yes, as well that's right. completed and delivered in, in English so these are totally all English uh, bachelor bachelor programs yes all bachelor programs are taught in English. Yeah, so good diverse, uh, as you can see, really diverse group of courses available at, at USC, really fantastic opportunity in many different uh, fields of study, which I think is is fantastic for, for, for students. Mm -hmm. And our target um, goal in 2023 intake is 30 students, 3 all. 
So we really yeah. want to have 30 international students to study in USC in 2023. Yeah. yeah, I think we can. And I think uh, a lot of our attendees today can see that UIC is a, a fantastic university, great place to, to study and an opportunity to study in China, which of course is one of the most exciting um, countries to, to study and a great place to be right now. So how close, um, how would you say uh, the teaching style is uh, at, at UIC? Do you, um, it's more um, definitely a good mix of Chinese and Western style uh, teaching uh, at, at UIC. And a lot of the professors and faculty members are quite approachable for, uh, for the students as well. Everyone's quite, quite tight together, right? Yes, uh, UNC, uh, we have a lot of faculty members from abroad. Our faculty members from more than, as I introduced just now, they are from more than 30 countries and regions. And uh, our classes are small side classes, like um, 20 to 30 students. Um, we have Chinese students and also international students to stay in one class. Uh, I mean, international students are not, uh, um, let's say, separated from Chinese students. It's not that, mm. uh, situation they stay together they will communicate yes. together. so they have class all together yeah and they have a small group uh, projects and they have presentations yeah it's very diverse part i mean yeah. the teaching method. Mm -hmm. do you think as well you could um perhaps quickly show us uh the dormitory uh available a dormitory available we have um two Dormitories. I mean, phase one. Uh, the dormitories uh, on phase one campus and dormitories on phase two campus. For phase one uh, dormitory, so it's a two persons room, three persons room, and three uh, persons room, persons room. And for the phase two campus, let me uh, to to go back to the PPT. There has some yeah. Pictures. If you could just go uh, back here. to that. Yeah. So can you okay. see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is for the phase one campus. I mean, I mean. Uh, uh, the dormitory is in phase one campus. So it's um, like this. Mm -hmm. It's the actual uh, scenery of our dormitory. It's now the, the, the picture, I mean, the uh, effective picture. It's the real uh, picture of our dorm dormitories. And uh, mm -hmm, on each mm -hmm. floor, they will have a canteen. They will have a common study room. They, um, they can study in the self-study room. And uh, let me go to another um, page to show the phase two dormitory. So is there Here. a difference in the price between phase one and phase two? Uh, the it's the same. It's the same. same. Yes. For two person room is uh, 6,400 RMB per year. And for three person yeah. room is uh, 4,000 RMB per year. And for four uh, process room, it's 3,200 RMB per year. So that's- So 6,000 uh, RMB is around uh, 1,200 Australian dollar. US yeah, dollar, more or less. US dollar around 800, uh, 800 yes. US dollar. Yeah, so yes, very, very affordable. We're talking one year. Uh, uh -huh. One year is only 800 uh, US dollar. So very, very affordable. And then also uh -huh. the canteen is quite affordable too. So most meals um, are only maybe 10, 15, 20 quai. Is that right? For yes, meal? for meals, yeah, we have three canteens on campus, on phase one campus. And um, the meal fees will be between uh, eight RMB, eight RMB, uh, I mean, 10 RMB oh. for breakfast. Yeah, and 15 yeah. to 30 for lunch and dinner. So it's very affordable. Yeah. Mm, so affordable. That was one of my favorite things studying in China, that going to the canteen, having very good food and very affordable. Yeah, and uh, we have a variety of food, Asian food, uh, Western food. Yeah. A lot of choices. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So um, could you just go back to the scholarship uh, page again? Sure. So, yeah, so this is first come, first serve. Yes. And we're looking at next year, the September intake. 
uh, for bachelor programs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have the yeah thirty percent entrance uh, scholarship is definitely one uh, that your students should uh, should look at. Um, okay. So all of the courses, I believe, in ninety around ninety thousand renminbi per year. Uh, for 2023, our uh, tuition fee is 100,000 100. RMB. Yeah, except oh, okay. the mu yeah. music program. All yeah, others are music. all discussed. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 100,000. So, yeah, the 30% off, um, 30,000 RMB off. So, that's quite a, quite a significant amount off. Um, so, we yes. really encourage our students to get those applications in early. Uh, it's going to yes. be really important to get those early to secure uh, the scholarship for next September. That's when the intake is. So perhaps, Jessica, you could just explain briefly the, the application process uh, in terms of getting the visa. Um, so once maybe you could start just briefly go through um, what how long the application process looks like. Okay, I think it's very important question. Thank you, Bob, for reminding this to, to, to mention this again. Um, for international students, they first, uh, they can go to US website. They can click. Let me go back to international development office. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll still make the application through us at Yes Education. Mm -hmm. um, our team will help, help with that, collect all of the, the documents that uh, Jessica showed before. Um, but once we send that application in, how long mm -hmm. is the processing time? Okay, after we receive uh, all the documents, mm -hmm. we will need two weeks to process this. Uh, first, okay. uh, ID International Development Office need to review all the documents, and then we will pass this to our divisions, I mean faculty and schools, and uh, the program director and also the dean will review these documents, and uh, we will arrange an interview. And later, we will submit this to our academic registry for final check. Yeah. That's the procedure. Yeah, within two weeks. What, what uh, sort of questions um, take place during the interview? Is it more just uh, you have to have an um, understanding of uh, sort of the personality and the goals and objectives of the students? More like just understanding um, what the student wants from the program? We will enter all these aspects. I mean, uh, why they apply to study at UIC and um, their motivation and also their mm -hmm. academic information. Uh, for some of the uh, interviews, uh, our uh, professors will um, give um, probably, uh, like if they apply for computer science uh, program, probably a math uh, uh, test, um, probably some questions will be asked. It seems like math uh, tests. And for uh -huh. some, uh, okay. yeah, some of the um, programs in, School of Culture and Creativity. Um, our program director will ask the student to provide um, art, um, portfolios, like uh, their works they have made before, to support their applications. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty clear. So I think shouldn't shouldn't worry too much. Um, just have to prepare for the interview and answer the the questions that Jessica um, has has mentioned. Yes, and so after the after this, and then we will uh, give the offer to the students and um, we will ask them to pay a uh, kind of um, deposit fees. Like we always to ask them to pay, pay the dormitory fees, like a deposit. And then after we receive How much the is money, the deposit again? Um, normally we will ask the student to pay 4,000 RMB. Yeah. And then after we 4, receive 000. the money, our finance office receive this money, we will, um, uh, we will help them to apply for GW224 and mm -hmm. um, make the preparation for international students. Yeah, so the JW244 uh, is the document that the student will need to apply for the visa. So that's yes, a very that's important right. uh, document. Yeah. And also the um, invitation letter from the school as well, right? Yes. That will yes. be arranged by you. Yeah, for this, I want to mention um, this is during pandemic. Applying for GW2 to form really takes uh, a long time. According to our experience, it will take around one month and a half. This is to yeah. get the uh, approved GW2 to form. So the students need to be prepared for um, receiving the form. After we, we have um, the approved GW2 form. We will deliver this to the students um, via very uh, express uh, mail 
And then after they have this form, they can apply for the visa in the Chinese embassy abroad. And also, yeah. So do you think the uh, the processing time of the JW22 form has uh, improved? Maybe a bit quicker than before. Uh, as the as the government really wants international students to come back, I think for twenty twenty three intake the procedure will be faster. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just in case everyone, um, yeah, Jessica, what. We saw the deadline, the application yes. deadline was June 30, right? Yes. So yes. That, that really should be the, the final date. Um, but like Jessica say, um, we do encourage applications to come in as early as possible. Um, and that will also help secure those uh, scholarships, which are um, our first come first serve. So there's only a few remaining. So we hope uh, <laughs> those applications can come in early. Uh, in particular for uh, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia. It would be really good uh, to get some good applications from there, as well as Nepal as well. Uh, so that, yeah, I think it would be good uh, if those applications can come in early when possible. Yes. And I see uh, Jesse has been answering the questions. Thanks, Jesse. Um, for answering those questions for us, which is good. A lot of students asking about the part-time study, um, which is not possible um, on a China uh, study visa. What, would you have anything else to say, Jessica, about part-time work or any other opportunities on, on that? Uh, actually, for the internship, the states is um, more flexible. Uh, actually, the students who are holding study visa, they can do the internship. Mm -hmm. So it's it, um this this is um very new this this days. I'm mean, starting from yeah. 20, 20, 21. This is open to international students. They can apply for internship visa. So if the students yeah. need this, can help them to apply. So it's yeah. not a problem at at all at now. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That's really mm -hmm. good. Okay. Um, any more questions from? from anyone here, specific questions about uh, student experience or uh, working opportunities or life in China, uh, any anything of that nature that you'd like to ask, um, please uh, put in the in the group chat now uh, so we can answer some of the last last questions. And just to remind everyone, um, Today, um, we're really just talking about uh, undergrad, uh, undergrad courses here. Um, they're the courses that we really want to um, promote, and they're the top courses available uh, at UIC as, as well. So we're looking at promoting long-term study uh, in, in China, in, in Zhuhai here. Um, master's uh, courses not, not available through us um, at, at this time. At, yes, just focusing on undergrad here. Yeah, to supplement, uh, only long-term study visa is open for international students. Short-term uh, study visa is not open. So only for yeah. four years that um, master uh, students, they can yeah. study. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question here. Uh, from Liv, um, what, when are the academic intakes? Um, so for bachelor program, it's just September, uh, September intake, every September. Yes, yes, we only um, intake students in September. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we mentioned as well, so intake of September and the deadline is June 30, uh, 30. every year for, for that. Yes, yeah. And then how much is cost of living? inclusive of accommodation. Jessica, uh, based on your experience, um, all the international students that study with you at uh, mm -hmm. UIC, roughly mm -hmm. how much are they uh, spending per, mo per month, would you say, on food uh, and any other uh, like entertainment sort of 
costs? What would you say in Joe High is quite quite normal? Yeah, it's really depending because different students have uh, different um, standard. But normally, on average, um, the cost for international students is around from three thousand RMB to five thousand RMB per month. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, three thousand to five thousand, I think, is quite reasonable. Uh, yeah. As, as well. Mm. Because textbook. food on campus is very, very affordable. Mm -hmm. For textbooks, the students need to pay around 1,000 RMB. And for transportation from, um, I mean, for the campus to downtown city, it's only 1 RMB um, for taking mm -hmm. the bus. But if but yep. they want to take taxi, it will be a little expensive. So the transportation fees will be around 200 to 500 per month. And also for meal fees, as I have mentioned just now, for lunch and dinner is around fifteen to thirty RMB. Yeah, that's um price. Uh, I mean expenses yes. on average. Pretty good, pretty good. I gotta say. Um, and Liv, we mentioned before, uh, the accommodation is uh, for the two bedroom is six thousand, right, Jessica? Six thousand four hundred RMB. Yeah, six thousand four hundred, and that's for the year. Remember, not monthly. That's for the year. Very, very year. affordable. For the year. Mm. And also, mm. USC will help international students to purchase insurance after their arrival. Um, the insurance okay. expenses will be 600 RMB. Yeah, that's mm. per year, is it? Per year. Yep, 600 per year. Mm -hmm. mm. And how much is the student visa, do you know, right now? Mm -hmm. You mean the students, uh, I mean, uh, X1 visa, they are applying abroad or because they need to apply uh, for the X1 study visa abroad. And then after their yeah. arrival in China, we will help them to yeah. change the visa status, like to change X1 visa to residence permit, which is yeah, kind of I mean, visa. Yeah, I mean the residence permit because uh, that's okay. the long-term visa. So because yeah. once they do that, you will give the full four years. Right, or is it only every you only give the residence permit every year? We always give uh, this visa for four years because oh, for, we, yeah. so it's a we full, the full four year visa, so it's only done once and that's done as soon as the student arrives in, in China. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, how, how much is that again? Would you say the price, four years? The price is 1000 RMB for applying for residence permits, yeah, 1000 RMB, yeah, yes. again for four years, very. Pretty affordable, pretty reasonable as well. Mm -hmm. um, question from C.W. Chow. Is student dormitory available to international students during semester breaks? Good question. Uh, yes, because uh, since everybody know that um, the pandemic situation in China, um, because um, um, now we have several, I mean, <laughs> There are several uh, confirmed cases uh, uh, in the cities around Zhuhai, but not in Zhuhai. So, mm. um, because our students are from more than thirty uh, cities in um, more than thirty provinces in uh, mainland China, so we need to um, provide accommodations during um, semester breaks. So the students can stay in the uh, dormitories in summer uh, holiday or winter vacation. So it's no problem. We will not force students to leave the campus during the breaks. It yeah. will not happen in USC. Mm. So for this, mm -hmm. uh, I think international students don't need to worry. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's all the questions there. So thank you everyone for your warm participation and active participation. Good to see some good uh, questions here. Can we get the slides later? Yes, we can get the slides later. Um, yeah, Jessica, if you could send me the slides by email after this or by sure, WeChat, no um, and then I can send to everyone else. Sure, I will yeah. send you later. Yeah. yeah. So again, yeah, once again, uh, thanks for everyone's participation. And if you have any more questions on UIC, uh, please get in touch with myself or your regional marketing manager from Yes Education more than happy to answer your questions. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about UIC for 2023. I think there's some real good opportunity there. It's really one of the top universities for international students uh, in China delivering English language programs. So really consider that 
uh, for next uh, September if your students are considering to, uh, to go to China, especially now that China is open for international students, which is really exciting uh, as, as well. So if you've got applications ready uh, or questions, please get in touch with myself. Um, I'd be the best place uh, or your RMM would be the best place to answer those, those questions and help with the application as well. So just let me know. And Jessica, uh, it's been great to meet you. And thank you for your presentation today. Really well done. And uh, I will let you know if I have any more questions uh, as, as well. And we certainly hope we have some students from Southeast Asia or uh, South Asia uh, in the near future. Thank you, Bo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that concludes the session for today. Um, hope you have a uh, good rest of the day, everyone, uh, overseas and here in Australia. Um, and that's all for today. So thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.